Joe Biden plays The Bachelor to pick his vice presidential running mate. That's next. Welcome back to Shake Shakers. Derek Van Shake, yeah. Joe Biden is just too much fun to just not talk about. I mean, that's what I'm kind of finding out, you know? It's just like, are you serious? <laughs> I mean, this guy is like in his own world. And, you know, this is not Democrat, Republican. This is just like, what the heck is he doing? <laughs> it's ridiculous. And something I want to talk about today is the way he's going to be picking his vice president. Because, of course, he is a presumptive nominee. I don't think it's official, official yet, even though some really feel that it is and that's going to be it. And, you know, you're stuck with Joe Biden. <laughs> you know, I don't think it's official, official. I think, um, you know, more stuff about Joe Biden comes out. And I don't think it's going to be as official as the mainstream corporate elite establishment media wants you to think. But the way that Joe Biden is deciding to pick his vice president, you may have heard, he has decided that it's going to be a woman. He has made that outwardly clear. There is no problem with picking a woman to be vice president or, you know, to be the nominee alongside you on the ticket. There has been several others, granted that they didn't pan out so well for the ticket and but I personally like to think that we're well beyond that point of feeling like, oh, a woman can't do that job. I mean, all that kind of garbage. I, I don't think we're at that point. I think we're beyond there. But that's not the problem that he's facing. The problem is, is that any woman who has ever held office, wants to hold office, is holding office, or even thinking about holding office, is all of a sudden sucking up to Joe Biden. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's hilarious. And they're pushing aside all the allegations, uh, the specifically Tara Reid allegations, any other kind of allegations that have been said against Joe Biden. They are pushing those completely aside and saying, oh, no, 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 no. I know, Joe. Oh, that's not true. <laughs> and they're saying this now when it benefits them. And it's ridiculous. There's just so many parts of this that's ridiculous. I'm not even scratching the surface yet. This is coming across as Joe Biden as, like, The Bachelor. <laughs> you know how, like, on The Bachelor TV show, even if you didn't see it, you kind of get the idea. You know, one guy, 30 other girls, right, that want the guy or trying to compete over the guy, and even if it's just for cred and feeling like they're top woman or whatever, and they do it for The Bachelorette with 30 guys and one girl. You know, it's just a competition, more or less, and, of course, you know, everyone is hoping that they're going to fall in love after the show and that it's all going to work out. Usually it doesn't. But all these female candidates are like bringing themselves down to this terrible level of saying that, oh, yeah, all that stuff, all that those accusations, specifically with Tara Reid, Tara Reid accusing Joe Biden, all of that. That's not true because I know Joe Biden. He wouldn't do that. <laughs> and it's totally bogus because it's obvious why they're doing that. It's because they want to be on the ticket, of course. <laughs> It's ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. This whole thing is a complete shit show. It is a complete shit show. I just can't believe this is actually going on in our country. And here's the thing, too. As I said before, there is no problem at all with having a woman on the ticket. That's great. But here's the number one rule of choosing a woman or choosing any demographic you really want on the ticket. The number one rule. Can you guess? It is to not say what you're going to do. It is to not say you're going to pick that demographic. You can't specifically say that. Otherwise, it just comes across as just, just kind of pandering. All the corporate elite establishment politicians are coming out of the woodwork, and they're all saying these beautiful, wonderful things about Joe Biden. They're all sucking up to him. It's disgusting. Disgusting. I am thrilled, thrilled to be part of your campaign. I believe Joe Biden. Vice President Biden has addressed these allegations. I know Joe Biden, and I think that he is telling the truth and that this did not happen. Endorsing Joe Biden for president. Obviously, I'd be honored to serve with Joe. If he asked you to be his running mate, would you say yes? Yes. I'm honored to even be considered. I believe Joe. In this instance, I do believe Joe Biden. I could not think of a better way to end my candidacy than to join the tick. Join the, the Joe Biden. And it's obvious they're sucking up because if these allegations 
these terror read allegations were against anyone else other than Joe Biden or a corporate establishment elite Democrat, they would be those female politicians would be so, so against that guy and would kick him out of whatever office or wherever he was running in and just throw him to the curb. But only because they want to be on the ticket with Joe Biden to be vice president and probably president because Joe Biden would be lucky if he lasts four years mentally in the office. So they're willing to suck up and say whatever they have to say to get the job. It's just so disgustingly typical of mainstream elite establishment politics, you know? Like, I'll, I'm willing to say whatever I need to say. Just put me on the ticket. Just put me on that ticket. I'll defend him to the bitter end, even though it's obvious he's guilty. I don't care. It's ridiculous. That's all they care about. Have these people ever really thought that government is for the people, by the people, and not just for them and the big corporations that they represent? It's just so ridiculous. And, you know, this whole thing that I talk about with the corporate elite establishment, it is a movement, you know, and I think it transcends party. I really do. Like, this is not by any means like a Republican thing, a Democrat thing. We've seen it with the Bernie Sanders movement on the left and Donald Trump on the right. Let's bring back government for the people, by the people. And there's no second place. You know, that's the thing, too, about all this. A lot of politicians, I think, they run on and may believe that, OK, well, it's first for the people and second for the corporations and third for the special interests and fourth for the lobbyists of the special interests. When you have it stacked rank like that, you're naturally just going to go to the person or the group of people that have the most money that's going to get you into office. <laughs> that's how it works. Instead of saying, OK, there is no number two, number three, number four, five. There's nothing below number one. It's for the people. Government is for the people, by the people. You know, there is no number two. OK, and I think that's the problem because I think a lot of politicians, they start out saying, it's for the people, everything like that, but number two, corporations, et cetera. But then they immediately default to the special interests, corporations that have all that big money that's going to get them back into office. So naturally, those guys are number one, not the people. And that's the problem. That's the big problem I see with politics today is that it's just been hijacked, hijacked by special interests and corporations hijacked. And it's so ridiculous that every platform, cable channel, and every mainstream news channel, they're all run by corporate elite establishment Democrats. They're completely run by them, including uh, maybe one of these platforms, social platforms too. So what ends up happening is that any view that doesn't land within the very specific framework of the corporate elite establishment Democrat framework, anything that doesn't fit within that sliver, okay? You will be basically shadow banned. It doesn't matter whether it's cable news. It doesn't matter whether it's mainstream media and main channels on the news, newspapers, internet, social media. Nope. They will shadow ban your content if it doesn't fit within their framework. Shadow banning, I think, is a violation of the First Amendment right we have. And some may say, no, Derek, no, Derek. Shadow banning is not a violation of that because you can go outside, you can say it, you can do whatever, you can go on another platform and say it. I disagree because some platforms have a monopoly over certain means of communicating your voice. Okay? So as long as you're not hurting anybody, specifically directly hurting anybody or telling people to hurt themselves or something terrible, you should not be shadow banned because that is a violation of your First Amendment right. Because nowadays, speaking here to you guys, right, this is my First Amendment. And if anyone who says that these platforms, they can easily shadow ban. There's no problem with shadow banning because they are a private company and they get to decide what's on their platform and what's not. Bull. That is not the way it works because you're suppressing certain voices. That means other voices are rising to the surface, voices that you choose to rise to the surface in this monopoly of a medium of a platform. That means that certain voices, certain views, certain political views will be suppressed and therefore trying to maintain power for whichever group. In this case, it's the corporate elite establishment. Whether it's one side or the other, 
I don't care. It's corporate elite establishment because that's where they get their money. They're all in bed with one another, all, you know, tooting each other's horns, keeping each other in power and maintaining the social strata, the social construct that they have created. They are doing it across the board because that's how they maintain their power. It is ridiculous. You know, it's funny, guys, because before I really got involved in social media, I never really thought of it too much as shadow banning or really that there was really this corporate elite establishment. I mean, obviously, you know that people have money, get people in power, things like that. You know, Frank Underwood's of House of Cards and things like that. Yeah, I understand how that works, but I think it has gotten worse. And I think it's getting worse because I think that they feel like their power grab is slipping away. I think specifically the corporate elite establishment media is extremely scared of social media because what that's doing is it's unveiling them and revealing the truth, starting kind of like a grassroots movement of people that want to take back our government, take back our country. And... They don't want that. They want to keep the establishment in place. They want to keep the corporations, the special interests, lobbyists in place because they all feed off of each other. It's like this, you know, or <laughs> because what all of this is doing is keeping that vicious cycle of first keeping the people in power in power and second to keep big corporations big and profitable. And who else is also part of the big corporate establishment elite? You guessed it. It's the mainstream media. That's right. Social media. They have a very strong interest in keeping the corporate establishment elite in place and getting whoever politician that that's going to help them to stay in place elected. And if you think about this, right, Google is what the second or third largest company in the entire world. I mean, it's massive. I think it's like Apple, Amazon and Google are probably the big three companies in the entire world. So if you don't know, Google owns one of the biggest social media platforms in the entire world. So who do you think Google, one of the three biggest companies in the entire world, who do you think Google actually wants to be president of the United States? Do you think they want Bernie Sanders? Do you think they want Donald Trump? No, they want the corporate elite establishment Democrat in the White House. Why? Because it's going to help maintain their interests, their special interests, so they can keep on making a lot of money. It's all just so ridiculous that these career politicians are so in bed with the corporations and special interests, lobbyists, and everyone like that. And all the people below are just pawns that they're just moving around for them to all above keep their power. That is bogus. That's not the way this country was set up. I think it's time for us to take our country back. And part of that whole thing of career politicians using people as pawns is exactly what we were talking about before. All of these candidates that want to become Joe Biden's pick for vice president, yeah, they're all lying to you. They know Joe Biden had done this. It's obvious if you watch any of the footage that he was lying. It's obvious that this is in line with what he has done in the past, what he has been accused of in the past. It's obvious. But still, you know what? They don't care. They want power. So they're going to lie. They're going to lie to you. They're going to say, oh, no, no, Joe Biden's a good guy. He would never do that. No, <laughs> he wouldn't do that. Trust me, I, I know Joe Biden. He, he wouldn't smell my hair. <laughs> Come on. It's obvious these allegations have been out there. The footage is out there. If you watch my other channels, it's all out there. They just don't want to show it. <laughs> they don't want to talk about it. They want to ignore it. You know why? Because they want to be the pick. You know, it's like that pick that Joe Biden's doing, right? Saying that I'm going to pick a woman who's going to be it. It's all oh, pick me, pick me. You know what that reminds me of? It reminds me of, I think there's actually a Broadway play or a production where, you know, some big hotshot comes into town and he's looking for the next big star. Who's going to be the next big star? And they all just suck up to him and just say whatever they have to say just so they become the next big star, you know? That's what it reminds me of. It's completely bogus. It's hilarious. It's ridiculous. And they keep doing it. You know why? Because the mainstream media isn't talking about Tara Reid. All they have to do is anytime it's brought up, Tara Reid's brought up, they'd be like, no, 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 no. I trust Joe Biden. He wouldn't lie about that. And, and he's, 
he's truthful. Yeah, he's he's really truthful. And 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 he wouldn't do that. He just wouldn't do that. I know him. He wouldn't do that. And here's the thing: if Tara Reid, with her evidence, were to come out against anybody else, specifically a Republican or a you know Bernie Sanders, right? Those same people who are vying to be Joe Biden's vice president and saying everything under the sun, how wonderful Joe Biden is. What do you think they would be saying? They would be calling that person names. The mainstream media be running with it. They will be talking about it. It will be this vicious cycle of trying to tear somebody down, which maybe should happen, maybe should not. Whatever it is, it should be an even playing field. I mean, come on. Are you kidding? And to me, you know what that shows? It just shows how corrupt Washington is, how corrupt these politicians are how they don't have any standards. There's no standards. The only standard is their title within Washington. Are you a congressperson? Are you a senator? Are you a vice president? Are you this? Are you a president? You know, where are you? You know, what cabinet position do you have? You know, it's all about climbing their social ladder within Washington to make themselves feel a little better about themselves. That's what it's all about. It's not about you. It's not about the people. It's about them. It's not about the truth. It's not about what happened. It's not about Bernie Sanders. It's not about Donald Trump. It's about them and them staying in power. And in turn, they're helping corporations special interest, also get what they want so they can give these people money so that they can become elected and reach the levels in government that they want to reach. This is very clearly like that TV show, the Netflix show, House of Cards, right? Just, I don't care what I have to say. Just say what I have to say. I just want to get to the next level. If I say that Joe Biden doesn't have dementia, does that mean I'll get to be one heartbeat away from the president? Yeah. Oh, okay. Joe Biden doesn't have dementia. <laughs> It's just completely crazy. They're just willing to lie, say whatever. And the mainstream media is willing to cover it up because why? It gets them what they want. Everyone scratches everyone else's back. I would like to use another metaphor right there, but uh, I'm afraid I'll be even more shadow banned than I already am. All right, that's all I got. Give this video a thumbs up if you're against that corporate elite establishment. Give this video a thumbs down if you identify with the corporate elite establishment. And God help you. <laughs> In the comments below, who do you think Joe Biden should pick for his vice president? Should it be Bernie Sanders, maybe? Should it be Amy Klobuchar, Kamala Harris? Who do you think? Put that in the comments below. Remember to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on new body language videos usually or something related to body language and current event topics. And I'll see you at the top.